This is Sunday Focus, a weekly public affairs program that looks at the topics affecting our society and the people who are making a change in the community each and every day. The people who have vision for the next generation. Sunday Focus presents new challenges for us, keeping you informed with topics of local and regional interest. Now the host of Sunday Focus, Christine Manica. Hello and good morning. Welcome back to another edition of Sunday Focus. September, it's a very important month here at Results Town Square Media. We are proud to partner once again with Samford and the Children's Miracle Network for the 17th annual Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon presented by Jerry's Auto. For two days, Results Town Square Media will come together to raise money for kiddos and families who are battling cancer, the fight of a lifetime. Thursday, September 26th and Friday, September 27th, we'll focus on raising money and awareness for local brave kids. Normally, we like to give you a little preview of the two-day event, but this year, we're doing things a little bit differently. We are going to give you a sneak peek of a family you're going to meet during this year's Radiothon, and Bethany Olson with Sanford is here to give us the proud introduction. Hi, Bethany. Good morning. Yes, today we have the Nye family joining us. Miss Emma has been through quite a lot already in her short uh, short lifespan. She's gone through cancer. She's had chemotherapy. She's had bone marrow transplants, and she is here today coloring away. Um, <laughs> and we're so excited to let you hear a little bit more about her story from her mom and dad, Courtney and Trent. All right. Awesome. Well, welcome, you guys. Thanks so much for being willing to come on and just give us a little preview of Emma and your guys' story. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. So like we said, later on September 26th and 27th, they'll have the opportunity to learn more about Emma. So let's just give our audience a little glimpse. Tell us where you're from and a little bit about Emma. Well, Trent and Courtney, we're from Sioux Falls here. And Emma, she is three years old and was diagnosed with cancer at nine months old and uh, treated here at the Sanford Children's Hospital. And thank God she's in remission today, coming up on two years in remission, so. Oh, that's unbelievable. You know, let's go back a little bit. The emotions that you were feeling when you heard the word cancer for a nine month old, how did you process that? How did you explain it to your family? You know, cancer, you never want to hear the word, but you know, it comes through to everyone in their lives. If you haven't seen it already, you're going to at some point. And, you know, you just got to lean on God and your faith of the bigger picture of, you know, the world to come um, and just support whoever you're with and your family um, throughout that process. Um, when we did tell our friends and family, the support was overwhelming. So it was amazing. That's awesome. Services like Child Life help kids and families to understand the diagnosis, the treatments, even provide kids with games and toys at the castle. How great is it to have services like Child Life and the castle right here in Sioux Falls, so close to home? It's so nice. Um, They're so good at distracting her and just bringing in toys and everything so she forgets where she's at, but also then it helps or allows us to focus on what we're really there for. And we stayed in months at a time, so the the care team really gets to know Emma and us no. and really find her, her favorites and it, her personality. So the color yellow and horses, and they really took care of her. Yeah, that's awesome. And she's doing some coloring right now, like Bethany said. Hi, Emma. Say hi. <laughs> What are you going to draw next? Oh, say hi? A horse. A horse, maybe. What does a horse say? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. He's a little shy. That's okay. You know, it's so great that we're able to do this for local families, for kids. And these donations from our audience, they do make a difference in your guys' life. How has Child Life specifically helped Emma and your family? Well, I know when she got her port place, they, they gave her a little duck which was a, a really cool aspect because she has this new spot to get her medicine in her chest and it just kind of lightened the mood of, you know, she's not the only kid out there that has this port and they were really prepared to, to, to make her warm up to it, right? Yeah, and now she has lots of hair, but back when she was bald, they gave her a doll um, with 
like no hair as well. So it looked just like her. So she could relate and just feel normal. So yeah. we'll keep that doll forever, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. And you've seen it firsthand. Donations really do make a difference for you guys, thanks to Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Perfect. like Courtney said before, all the support that we've got and received, especially through uh, Sanford's Children's, has been amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Any other memories you have at the castle? Maybe Emma's favorite nurse or doctor she was looking forward to see? Maybe the dogs. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the dogs are great. And then Emma was unique. She was there at nine months, and she actually learned to walk in the in the third floor of the Children's Hospital here in, in Sioux Falls. So yep. pretty cool deal. So we have video of her first steps in the hallway. Oh, that's a great memory to have. And, you know, it's not easy when you talk about your child battling cancer. We want to reiterate our thanks and gratitude for sharing a little bit of Emma's journey today and just for Radiothon in general. Why did you want to share Emma's stories for this year's Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon? Yeah, anything we can do to help pay it forward to the next family, because Emma's not the only kid out there with cancer and battling. I know there's kids on the third floor right now and all across the world that, that need help. So appreciate all the donations and all your guys' help. If someone were to ask you about why they should donate during Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon, what would you tell them? It's one of the best, most important things you can donate to. Right, you can fundraise for that softball team, but helping that little kid out that really needs needs that extra support is something that just means the world to, to us specifically and to that next family. Awesome. Again, we are talking with the Nye family, Courtney, Trent, and little Emma about the 17th annual Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon presented by Jerry's Auto. Thursday, September 26th, and Friday, September 27th. That phone number to keep in mind, 605-328-5750. Bethany, anything else that you would like to add about what people can expect from this year's Radiothon? We have a lot of new stories that we'll be sharing with you. We also have some um, stories of families who we've shared previously that their kiddos have earned their wings that are coming back again to sh to help out the next family. They believe that th this is how they can continue to leave a legacy. So those will be some sad parts of Radiothon, but also just a journey of hope that they still are able to share their story with us. Um, so yeah, you can call during Radiothon that 605-328-5750 number, or you can text the word CASTLE to 51555, and you'll get a link to donate that way too. And I want to reiterate, we're back at the castle again. <laughs> yes, we are at the castle. We'll be there from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. both days. So if you want to stop in and bring your donation in person, that works too. And we're always trying to break goals. <laughs> we are. We like every dollar does make a difference. So if you give $5 or if you give $500, it, it all adds up to make a difference for local kids. That number, again, to keep in mind, 605-328-5750 for the Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon presented by Jerry's Auto on September 26th and September 27th. And thank you again to Bethany for joining us for a little bit and the Nye family. Great to have you guys back here in the studio. Thanks for having us. All right. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be back. St. Joseph's Indian School is much more than a school for Native American children. Since 1927, it's provided children the education, health care, and support they need to succeed. Learn more at stjo.org today. One of my passions in life is health and fitness, and one of my favorite things to do was also get outdoors. And this is the time of year where people get outdoors before the snow comes around, especially when it comes to hunting. And I'm being joined right now by Corey Howard. He is with Results Personal Training, basically right next door here to our studio. And good morning, Corey. How are you? Not bad. How are you? We're doing great. This is great to be here. Yeah. You know, like I said, we're in agreement. Health and fitness are so important. Hunting season in South Dakota is right around the corner. And before we talk about hunting and the relation to fitness, why don't you tell us a little bit about the results personal training that you're a part of? Yeah, we're uh, we're actually right next door to you. We're located on 57th Street. Had that location for, I've been there for about 17 years now. Um, and we work with anyone from, I have a guy in his mid-40s that's never lifted weights ever in his life. 
all the way to uh, a couple pro athletes. But no, we're a private appointment only facility. And everyone that comes in, basically, you have a scheduled time. You come in. Don't worry about what you're doing. We'll take care of it all. Run you through the workout that you need to get through and send you on your way. But we have a lot of fun. I own the place. Oh, um, okay. And, and I, <laughs> I, also, I also get to torture a few humans there too. So, but yeah. Torture a few humans. Well, help them, whatever you want well, to say. Well, see, that kind of scares <laughs> me a little bit. You said that you're a privately owned training facility, mm-hmm. the appointment only. So what type of programs do you guys offer your clients when they come check you guys out? You know, everyone that comes in, the first thing we do is we screen them, running through a basic movement screening and address kind of the weak links. It's kind of like uh, an x-ray for your movement. That way we can find what's working and what isn't. And then we design everyone's program based off of that. So it's completely unique to each person. Primarily strength training, but we, you know, the older we get, the more flexibility we need. So we also have a yoga instructor on staff. I do work with people with their dietary habits, but for the most part, we're strength focused. Okay. So for any members that would go to Results Personal Training, what's their experience like, you know, from the first training Mm -hmm. session they have all the way up to maybe about a year into it. Well, as the owner, I'd like to say they're loving it, but um, <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, it's, it's cool. You're basically teaching a, a movement pattern and everyone starts from the ground up. So on day one, there's a lot of learning and you, you ask about a year out, a year out, they're setting goals and breaking records that they haven't done in a long time and doing things that they didn't think were possible. Um, and it's just a lot of fun watching these things happen with people. You know, the fitness industry is probably 80% weight loss. Um, so that's, going to be a big piece of it. Mm-hmm. But we do have a lot of young athletes and college athletes as well. Um, the beauty of it is, is our staff is quite diverse. So we can pretty much help people with whatever their goal is. I mean, I don't want to say we do it all. Um, we don't do bodybuilding. We don't do uh, niche stuff like that. But we have a lot of guys in there and women in their 40s and 50s, as well as some high school and college athletes. And we just help them get better, eliminate aches and pains and enjoy life. You were talking about how you had a someone that was in their 40s mm-hmm. come in, hasn't lifted a single weight in their life. So for anyone who hasn't worked out in the while or hasn't lifted a weight, how would you approach someone for a workout or for a training session? That's actually one of my most fun sessions. Um, <laughs> it, it really is because they've... <laughs> You're, they're starting from scratch. They don't have any bad habits. Um, just learning a squat. Everyone's like, well, knee squats hurt my knees and just simply sit down on a bench and stand up. Now do that 10 times. We've just did 10 squats and it's just teaching the basic human movement patterns, um, and adding reps to it creates proficiency. And then after a little bit, now they're holding dumbbells and it just, it's just a fun progression. What's a typical fitness plan that you would recommend to someone who does modern exercise or even someone who is looking for a meal plan? You know, all of those are going to be unique to each person. Uh, We'll touch on the meal plan. The first thing that I tell people is write down everything you eat for the next five days um, and bring it to me and let's take a look. That does two things. One, writing it down. Usually people are like, I didn't realize I eat this much. (laughs) Um, But it also gives us a starting point. Uh, so we can eliminate certain things or play with the timing of different types of foods. Um, and everything's unique to each person. Um, as far as the workouts go, usually we start out just basic body weight stuff. And then when I don't, on the days that you're not in seeing me, go for a walk. I mean, you talked about in your intro, the weather, the fall is gorgeous. The leaves are beautiful. The air is crisp. Take your dog on a leash. Go for a walk. It's beautiful. Just get outside, get your heart rate up, go for 30 minutes. Just simple and basic. We can build on that. Absolutely. What's it like to be part of someone's health journey? I imagine it's a pretty rewarding experience. It's so cool. Um, You know, that guy that I talked about in his his later 40s that just started lifting, um, seeing him deadlift his body weight for the first time, that was really cool. Um, Having athletes go on and, and... commit to big scholarships at big colleges that they never thought they were going to be able to do. Those are th- fun things to be a part of. Yeah. It's, um, it just, you know, God gave me an excitement for, for fitness. And I really believe we're put here to help people. Um, and this is just my tool and it's fun to help people better themselves. I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, absolutely. My fiance, he's a professional golfer. So he's in the gym lifting all the time. And he's like, you know, that's going to help me swing faster. It's going to help me. Gosh, it's going to help him stay on the course longer and just keep up with all the other guys as he gets older in the long run. Yeah. 
A for longevity. He's mm-hmm. he's spot on because we we do get weaker as we get older. Mm-hmm. So it's important to stay in the gym. And B, it's fascinating to me lately. You, you look at ten years ago golfers versus golfers nowadays. Yeah, they they lift weights. They're bigger. They're stronger. It's just insane. So yeah, doesn't matter whether we're hunting, playing golf, or just whatever we're doing. Pick up some heavy stuff. Get stronger. <laughs> Absolutely. If you are just listening, I'm being joined by Corey Howard. He is the owner of Results Personal Training. We're talking about getting in shape, particularly for hunting season. Now, for the most part, I would say that South Dakota is a pretty active state. There are golf courses, soccer fields, and yes, there are hiking trails out west and a bunch of hunting opportunities. And that's more than what meets the eye. When people think of hunting, they normally wouldn't think about fitness, but there is fitness involved. So how does fitness and hunting come together? That's a a great question. Um, I mean, whether you're in Colorado, running around the mountains with with your rifle, trying to shoot your elk or deer, or you're just in the state of South Dakota walking through a field trying to turn a shoot a pheasant. Mm-hmm. Either way, you're walking, you're out in fresh air, you're you're stepping over some some challenging terrain. Um it it is a workout. So to neglect and to not prepare for it a few months ahead of time, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice. I mean, it, at the end of the day, we hunting in these parts, I remember hunting with my son. It's just a it's a family thing. You get out with your boy and and you're out in the field and you're walking in the crisp air and you shoot a bird and you're talking to them and it's just, it's just a great bonding experience and the better shape you're in, the more crazy atmosphere you can be a part of and the better hunt you're going to have. What kind of fitness is involved with hunting? So you're obviously, you're carrying a weapon. Like yep. you say, you're going through different types of, uh, of weather, of terrain, all that type of stuff, right? Yeah, most definitely. So I think like you're asking specifically what are the things you can do to prepare for it? Yeah. 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 So five things. Um, <laughs> Let's bullet point five things. Yeah. The, the, the first thing I would tell people to do, start in June or July, probably June, and get on the treadmill. Walk at an incline. Work your way, <clears throat> excuse me, work your way up to about a 10% incline at three mile an hour. Don't hold on to the handrails or anything and just walk at that. If you can do 10% at three mile an hour for 30 minutes, super cool. That's a great starting point. If you can do that now with your backpack and everything that you're going to have when you're in Colorado... Um, with your 40 to 60 pound backpack, even better. Um, but get uncomfortable. Just walk. You don't have to go out for a run. Walking's a nice, easy on the joint, easy on the hips and joints and good way to go because you are walking when you're hunting. Second thing is uh, farmer walk. In other words, pick up something heavy and go for a walk with it. We have people, if you look out the window at results, you'll see people walking up and down the sidewalk quite a bit, carrying kettlebells. And that just relative to that's relevant for hunting just pick up something heavy and it also strengthens your grip as well as your upper back um the other thing is speaking of upper back we do need to spend some time strengthening our upper back because again if you're carrying stuff like your weapon or your backpack you need to have a strong upper back that creates more stability um so dumbbell rows seated cable rows things like that that's that pull the shoulder blades together uh you need to do the other thing is your legs. Don't neglect them. I know guys, as they get older, they my knees hurt, my hips hurt, and they don't want to do squats or they don't want to do lunges. Knock it off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a natural move. You sit down in your, in your chair and you stand up, that's a squat. So the stronger your legs are, the better. Um, figure out how to squat. Goblet squat, body weight squats, back squat, lunges, side, forward, backward, get those in, strengthen up your lower body. Cause your lower body is the foundation of, of everything. The stronger you are from the hips down, the better you are. Um, after that, focus on some core stability. Um, and I don't mean like doing a bunch of sit-ups because that's just a waste of your time. Um, challenge your stability. In other words, squat with a kettlebell only in one hand on the, on the right side, try and stabilize and stay square while you're doing that. When you're out, hunting and you're picking stuff up, it's never perfectly balanced. Even in life, you go to hy V and pick up the groceries. You're going to have more groceries on your right hand than you are on your left. This is very true. Yeah. (laughs) So, (laughs) so work things asymmetrically or, or single side only to create more systemic, um, stability throughout the whole body. Um, and I think those are the, the five things, incline walk, farmer walk, upper back strength, lower body, and create stability and you should have a heck of a hunt. Oh, there you go. So does the type of hunt depend on the fitness activity, like what you should be doing in order to prepare for the hunting season? 
Yes. Um, I, <laughs> you know, walking a field to South Dakota is going to be way different than walking through the mountains of Colorado yeah. trying to shoot that elk. Um, so yeah, you know, one, if you're walking the field to South Dakota, you probably don't have to spend as much time, spend as much time prepping. Um, but being a guy that makes a living in the fitness field, you should be prepping like you're going to go hunting in Colorado anyway. Oh, absolutely. What's the difference between, let's say, deer hunting and pheasant hunting? Because those are both popular here in South Dakota. Yeah, you know, um, my son and I used to go hunting with a, with a group of retired dentists. Um, and these guys, would we'd get out and we'd take the bus to where we need to and we'd slowly walk the field and somebody would be out front blocking um, versus my clients that are out hunting deer and elk. Um, it's not as comfortable for them, you know, <laughs> they're out in the middle of nowhere, uh, camping in a tent and, and living off the land and, and they need more physical endurance. They need more physical strength. Um, so yeah, it's just a little more grueling. They should spend a little more time getting prepped up for their hunt. What are the benefits of working out before hunting season as opposed to someone that doesn't work out beforehand? You're just going to have a better hunt. You're in better shape. <laughs> I mean, we talked about yeah. creating memories. Um, what do you want for a memory? You, you, you couldn't cope with your breathing and you couldn't get going and, and you wound up calling it early and you didn't shoot the animal or you were out there and the terrain really wasn't that challenging because you spent six months prepping for it and you got the elk you wanted um, and you had a better hunt. I mean, it's just, you decide what you want to do. Yeah. Are you ready for hunting season? That seems like a silly question <laughs> to ask. Yeah. I, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was looking in with one of my clients looking at uh, doing an elk hunt out in Colorado. So we'll see what happens with that. Corey Howard, he is with Results Personal Training, the owner of it. Corey, if anyone has any questions for you about Results Personal Training, about getting into shape or interested in what you guys do, how can they contact you? So two ways. Um, our website is resultsptonline.com. There's a form on there that you can fill out or just shoot me a call or a text at 605-310-6591. All right. Awesome. Once again, it's Corey with Results Personal Training. Thanks for telling us a little bit about what you guys do and about how to get in shape for hunting season. Thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Teachers are diverse, skilled leaders, innovating to prepare students for our fast-changing world. Teaching shapes lives. Are you ready? Explore teaching at teach.org. Supported by the U.S. Department of Education and one million teachers of color. September is a very important month at Results Town Square Media. We are proud to partner with Sanford and the Children's Miracle Network for the 17th annual Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon presented by Jerry's Auto Group with three locations in Lenox, Beersford, and Vermilion. For two days, Results Town Square Media will come together to raise money for kiddos and families who are battling cancer, the fight of a lifetime. Thursday, September 26th and Friday, September 27th will be the focus of raising money and awareness for local and brave kids. Normally, we give a little preview of the two-day events, but this year we're going to highlight the main sponsor of the two-day radiothon. Jerry Barr with Jerry's Auto Group has been a big part of the annual Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon, and we're happy to have Jerry in the studio to talk to him more about Radiothon. Good morning, Jerry. How are you? Good morning, Christine. Uh, Thanks for having me. Uh, You said 17 years, and I was wondering the other day how many years it's been, and uh, (laughs) boy, time flies. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's funny that you say that because we always have this debate on, is it the 17th year or if it's the 15th year? Nobody really knows, but we think it's the 17th year of Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon. So let's just talk about your part in this event. First of all, though, tell us a little bit about Jerry's Auto Group and your history. Wow. Well, uh, I'm in my 45th year. Mm-hmm. Uh, started in 1979. It's I, I, I can't even believe that saying it, but uh, 45 <laughs> years. I I don't even feel like 45 years old, but uh, it is. <laughs> uh, started as a body shop in in Lenox, South Dakota, and started selling a few cars. And <clears throat> after advertising with Results Radio, we we started selling quite a few cars. Um, Bought a dealership and a Chevy dealership in Beersford in 2004, I think, and then 2014 we bought a Chevy GMC dealership in Vermilion, and uh, here we are. Here we are, 45 years. Is it pretty rewarding for you to say? 
that you've been a part of the Sioux Empire community for 45 years. Oh, absolutely. What a great community we live in. I mean, compared to a few cities around the country, uh, you know how special Sioux Falls is. Absolutely. Can you recall maybe some challenging times and how you pushed through them within the 45 years? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, it was <laughs> it was me, my dog, and a box of tools when I started, so... Um, you know, that was, that was pretty challenging. I was the estimator, the, the body man, the painter, the parts runner, the cleanup guy. I was the uh, uh, bookkeeper, uh, money collector, you name it. So those, are, those were pretty interesting times, but uh, hard work, dedication pays off. So, um, you know, as, as you go through the, th the years, I mean, you know, we hit times like 2001 with 9-11 and financial crisis in 2008 and oh boy we just went through a you know quite a deal with COVID and you know the way the landscape changes um, through all that is is quite dramatic so good companies work their way through it and find a way to ways to do, deal with things so yeah absolutely you guys got a great team mm -hmm. over at Jerry's oh, Auto gosh. Group Tell you what, that's what makes our businesses our good people, and that's no joke. I mean, we tell people that we treat our employees like family and that we treat our customers like family, and it's true. And, and if you have that attitude and you really work with that on a daily basis, taking care of your employees, your employees take care of their customers, and, and that's, our, that's our driving force. Oh, driving force. I like the pun there, Jerry. <laughs> no pun intended, but yeah. <laughs> the business, you've been involved with a lot of events over the last 45 years, especially the Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon. Why have you been a partner and the title sponsor for the Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon? Maybe you have some personal stories behind it, too. Fortunately enough, our family's been pretty lucky. My dad passed away from cancer, and both my grandfathers did, but other than that, we've been pretty lucky and blessed in our family. We haven't had a lot of cancer, and, and our kids have all been healthy. But I tell you what, when you listen to those kids during the Radiothon tell their stories, uh, boy, if you can if you can listen to those and, and only imagine what they're going through and not have a – if you can keep a dry eye, you're, you're, you're pretty tough. Yeah. I just think about those kids and how tough they are. My gosh. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable to hear the stories during Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon. Let's just highlight the fact, too, how great is it to have the castle and just the Sanford pediatric experts right here in our own backyard? Oh, what a blessing that is as well. I mean, people coming from all over the country, bringing their sick kids for the care and 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 all the things that they're capable of doing there at the, at the, at the castle is just and just driving by. It makes you kind of happy. Yeah, absolutely. I love seeing, you know, there's the new playground now and the kids are out there yeah. playing on it. The water fountain, that's always pretty popular yeah, with the kids yep. during the summertime as well. Now, Jerry's Auto Group, they actually do a great $100 promotion that benefits Cure Kids Cancer. Can you tell us more about that going on? Yep, we donate $100 for every car that we sell uh, during the month of September. And uh, all goes 100% directly to the program. That's awesome. And, you know, Jerry, just to kind of wrap things up, if someone were to ask you why they should donate to Cure Kids Cancer, what would you tell them? Oh, boy. Um, it's the hardest question on this. <laughs> well, number one, I would say it makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And number two, I think everybody has a sense of giving back. You know, most people really care. When they see a sick child and they know that they, they can help them, you know, whatever you're giving, whether it's a dollar or a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, I mean, it's all making a difference. And I think people do get something out of giving back. Absolutely. And again, Cure Kids Cancer Radiothon, that is going to be at the castle. We're going to be broadcasting there, Results Town Square Media, on Thursday, September 26th. And Friday, September 27th, it's presented by Jerry's Auto Group. And that phone number to keep in mind for those two days, 605-328-5750. That's 605-328-5750. Jerry Barr with Jerry's Auto Group. Thanks so much for joining us and telling us a little bit about your 
your partnership with Cure Kids Cancer. Thanks for having me, and I just ask everybody to reach down and grab a buck or two and call in and make their pledge. Sunday Focus is a public affairs program of Results Radio, Town Square Media, Sioux Falls.